Welcome to Torch. Our goal in Christ is to make a difference in the lives of His people through love and restoration. Come as you are to a place of hope, a place of love, a place you can call home. Be restored. Torch. Amen. God has a purpose for you, but the enemy wants to distract you. Amen. Amen. He wants to discourage you and he wants to depress you. But tell someone, I will not be denied from my purpose. And so in my purpose, in my life, I'm going to have pain. Oh, can I tell someone, you're going to hurt, you're going to bleed, you're going to cry. Amen. But that will not stop your purpose. Amen. Because you are, amen, the workmanship of Christ. In other words, he created you with purpose in mind. And he knew that the enemy would come and he would huff and he would puff and he would try to destroy your house. Amen. But you had to tell someone not on today because I'm living on purpose. You don't have to wait till the battle's over. You can shout now. You ought to give them praise. Give them glory. Give them honor and say I'm living on purpose. Hallelujah. Because I've been selected. I've been anointed. I've been chosen for this generation. Chosen for this day. Chosen for the storm. Chosen for the struggle. And I've been chosen to have success. Because I am rising. Because Jesus died. Thank you for tuning in to our YouTube channel at Torching 418. We're having a wonderful time at Temple of Restoration, and we would like to invite you to join us during one of our services on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock for our Sunday worship. We promise you, you're going to be blessed. Torch is worth the drive. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Amen. Amen. He says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts. Amen. With praise. And I don't know about you, but I have just a few things, more than a few things to give God some thanks and some praise for on this morning. Amen. He kept me all week long. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody don't have that testimony on this morning. Amen. Somebody didn't wake up on this morning. Amen. Somebody's laying on their bed of affliction. Hallelujah. But I praise God. Amen. For thinking enough of me. Amen. To allow me one more chance. Hallelujah to come into his house, amen, to give him the utmost praise, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now, God. We thank you, Lord God, because you're better than good, Lord God. We lift you up and we magnify your holy name, oh God. We realize, oh God, that if it had not been for you on our side, oh God, we would be tossed and driven like a ship without a sail. But Lord, we just open up our mouths, oh God, we lift up our hands, oh God, and we give your utmost name the praise, oh God, because you're worthy of all the praise, oh God. In spite of what we're going through, Lord God, you're yet still worthy of the praise, oh God. You're worthy of the honor, oh God. We ask that you saturate this place, oh God, with your presence, oh God. Fill this place up, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, we decrease, oh God, that there is an increase of you, oh God. An increase of your anointing, oh God. An increase of your love, Heavenly Father. Peace, oh God, that surpasses all understanding, oh God. We move out of the way, Lord God, that you have your way in this place, oh God. Don't let us leave the same way that we came, oh God. We came in need of something, oh God. Meet every need right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. You know every heart, oh God. You know every tear, oh God. You know every prayer and petition that your people have laid before you, oh God. And we ask that you grant the need, oh God, on this morning, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Continue to bless our pastor, oh God, the shepherd of this house, oh God. Continue to strengthen him, oh God, for the work that he has before him, oh God. Continue to anoint him, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Continue to provide provisions, oh God, for his visions, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Anoint our musicians, oh God. Bless them in the name of Jesus, oh God, and bless yet this service, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Bless everyone under the sound of my voice, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. We forever give your name all glory, all honor, and all praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I
holding nothing. I give myself away. are invited, amen, to join God's purpose. Uh, many are invited to the wedding, so to speak, but not everybody RSVPs. Chasing, amen. We'll sing this in honor of Tiana, amen, our oldest daughter who's in Georgia, amen. <laughs> amen. I'm still that mama, amen, who misses her baby. I'm, I'm like, I'm, 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 I am not care how old you get, you're still my baby. 37 years of me and I'm still my mama's baby.
shooting guard y'all he's tough man they from chicago i feel safe right now amen but at this time we're gonna ask if brother samuel can come amen he's gonna do the welcome of our visitors following him we're gonna have our announcements by sister tamia let's receive them in that order amen Fun, fun, fun. Come to game day on third Sundays. Wear your favorite team jersey and play video games after service. So there will be plenty of games for everyone. There's power and prayer. Every Thursday, torch will be in prayer from 6.30 to 7 p.m. Join us this Thursday as we lift up our community in prayer. These are the nonsense to be stored in God bless. Amen. 
Let's put it up for the torch and lead. Brother and sister, <laughs> Samuel and Tamia. Thus far in the service, we've had our praise and worship. We've also had our welcome and our announcements. However, we did have our giving on today, and we would like for you to take part of that. Will you please sow a love seed into this ministry? There's great soil here at Temple of Restoration, and we need your help to impact God's kingdom. You can give via Cash App at Torch418, or you can give at PayPal.me slash Restore418. God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you at one of our services. But we're looking forward, um, I don't know if we put in the announcements, but we have a tournament. Why don't you give it up for that tournament coming up? Oh yeah, that tournament's going to be on the 21st and 22nd of March. We're going to be in Round Rock, and then tell somebody on the 28th. We're going to be in Belton, clapping up for the Adidas Gauntlet Tournament. Wow, they're going to have some scouts there, some talent evaluators. I'm telling you, that's your time to shine, Curtis, Tamia, and Samuel. Tell somebody, it's your time to shine. Amen. Amen. But we're just so happy to be here. And let's give it up for our wonderful musician. This guy, man, I'm telling you. Give it up for Brother Red. Come on, y'all. Make some noise for him. I tell you, Brother Curtis, he was an answer to prayer, too. Just like you and uh, Coach Zeke, he was an answer to prayer. Amen. You mentioned the woman with the issue of blood, and she was going to the doctors and things like that. Amen. But Jesus had her healing. Amen. And so sometimes, amen, you could, you could forget, amen, that getting on your knees and praying for what you want him to do. He says, ask and shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door be open. Amen. So we started our ministry in um, September of 2016. Amen. And so we went all the way up until November of 2018. And that's when God put him in our lives. So why don't you give God praise for this young man. He's been so faithful. He's so gifted. Um, so talented and we thank him for his faithfulness and I told him amen that we're going to bless you that what we can do but um, God is going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that so give God praise for brother Red amen he celebrated a birthday recently amen we ain't forgot <laughs> amen so we would like to amen treat him to something after service if he has time and he want to go out to eat or something he says hey can you get me something pastor we got you man so if you got time just let us know Amen. First lady, would you like to have any words before we get into the message? No? You got any basketball games on today? You like basketball? I, I love basketball. We were talking last night about it. Y'all don't know anything about us. We love sports up at Torch. Tell somebody, Torch Elite. God even working on me now. I might come out with a CD. <laughs> I came out with a... I guess I called myself poet because when I was in high school, I used to do poems. Red laughing at me. Amen. The guy, he gave me a little ribbon and a little rhyme. And so uh, look out. It's called Succeed. Tell somebody Succeed. Boy, look out for it. It's coming. I know somebody in Washington who does uh, lyrics. You know what I'm saying? He knows how to get that music. I already sent him the words. I was in the garage today when they were sleeping. Closed the car doors and I, I was quiet. I was going through it. I was like, ah, I do like two cuts. But, uh, as soon as it comes out, I'm going to release it. <laughs> Tamia said no. <laughs> All right. And let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for your grace and your mercy on today. Father God, we thank you for the Mathis family. We thank you, Lord, for everyone here today at Torch. We thank you for this wonderful musician, this drummer, Father God. We thank you for these young people. We thank you for Curtis Jr., uh, for Miss Mathis, for Christian, Lord, for my wife and all of our children, those that are here in this state and those that are in Georgia. Father God, we love you on today. We thank you for your presence, Father God. We thank you for the praise that went up. But right now, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we ask that you come in and move by your power. Lord God, move by your spirit right now. Let healing, Father, come on today. Let restoration come on today, Lord. Let joy, Lord Jesus, abound. In the name of Jesus, let your peace, Father God, saturate somebody's storm. Lord God, let your strength Father God, help someone to come out the struggle right now in the name of Jesus. We speak victory in this place. Oh, we speak life on today. Father God, I release joy in this place. Oh, Father God, I release, Lord, your presence, Lord, your spirit, your power. Father God, have your way right now in your word. Father God, by every word that you declare, it is so. And so your word says that we're healed by your stripes. In the name of Jesus, 
It says that we are more than conquerors. It says that we can do all things through Christ. Father God, we can survive. We can succeed. We can have success in Jesus' name. If you believe it, why don't you clap those hands and say, we can. You got to tell somebody, we can overcome. We can go over and beyond. Why don't you give God some praise and say, neighbor, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Because his word said, that his strength is made perfect in weakness. So whenever we're weak, amen, we're at our strongest point. You got to give God praise for that. Amen. Because when you're depressed, you're discouraged, you're dismayed. How many know that your blessing won't be delayed? Tell somebody it won't be denied. But tell someone that God is going to fulfill his promise in your life. I've come to encourage somebody on today that you're going to live and not die. I've come to tell someone, amen, that God has a purpose for you. You're not here by accident, amen, but you're here because he said that you would be here. He told Jeremiah that I knew you before you were in your mother's womb. And he said, I've ordained thee to be a prophet unto the nation. You ought to give God praise because he thought about you before your parents connected. He already knew that Curtis Jr. was going to be a basketball player on Tortellini. He already knew that you was going to come to Texas from Chicago. You was going to come from Ennis to Temple. You got to give God praise that he already knew you. Which means he knows all your victories. Which means he knows all your failures. But tell someone it's not going to stop you. I've come to encourage. We're going to speak on purpose today. Amen. But I've come to encourage you that God will use the good, the bad, and the ugly. Tell somebody, yes, he will. I've come to tell you on today not to be discouraged if you got some problems in your life, if you got some pain in your life, and if it's causing you to be perplexed, I've come to tell you that God works with problems. And guess what he does? He lets your, oh, he solves them. Yes, yes, ma'am. He solves them, but he allows your problems, amen, to turn in to your purpose. And he takes problems and he manifests his promises. Let's look at the word of God real quick. Can I get my binder? <coughs> Amen. But we're just so excited to be here. Give honor to my lovely wife. Amen. Um, thank her. She's my help me. She prays for me. Amen. She supports me. Amen. And she's been with me through the storm. I tell you, amen. And we tell people in life, I've heard someone recently tell me, amen, that no one goes through life unscathed. In other words, you're going to get hurt. You're going to get scarred. You're going to make some mistakes. Amen. But I thank the Lord that through it all, she stood by my side. Why don't you give God praise for her? Amen. I love you on today. Amen. So today, amen, we're going to be in Matthew uh, chapter number eight. This passage is probably very familiar. Most of us have been through Matthew and a lot of times we run to that 8 and 28. That's what we're going to do on today. Is that all right? Amen. We're going to run to it. Matthew, uh, excuse me, Romans. I got ahead of myself. Y'all forgive, Pastor. Romans 8 and 28. Amen. Romans 8 and 28. Apostle Paul says a few things here. I truly believe it's going to bless us. Amen. And in the 28th verse, he says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. Look at 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn amongst many brethren. This is going to tie into what Brother Curtis was saying. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Why don't you clap your hands for the word on today? Amen. Tell somebody living on purpose. on purpose. Tell somebody else, I'm living, I'm living. on purpose purpose. Uh, many of us have heard of Rick Warren. Amen. He penned the book, The Purpose Driven Life. Amen. I don't know about you, but 
we don't want to just exist in this world, in this cosmos. We don't want to just exist just to be alive without a purpose. Ask somebody, what are you living for? Hey man, you got to have a purpose, hey man. That purpose keeps you going. It keeps you getting up in the morning. It keeps you, hey man, hanging on to your dreams, so to speak. Hey man, tell someone, live it on purpose. Hey man, we serve a God of purpose, hey man. And the Bible declares, hey man, that he created the world in six days and he rested on the Sabbath. Hey man, he created every human. Hey man, he created every animal. And tell someone, when he created those people and things, he had purpose in mind. And so let's look at relationships real quick. When he uh, created Adam and he created Eve, amen, he told them to be ye fruitful and to multiply and to replenish the earth. In other words, he wanted families to come about because he understood, amen, that mom and daddy can't be on earth always and I need that generation to continue. And so he's like, okay, I'm going to have a Curtis Jr. I'm going to have a Stephen Jr. Tell someone God has a purpose for relationships. And his purpose for relationships is dealing with the family dynamic. Amen. He wants families in that legacy to continue. Tell someone purpose. Even the animals that he created. Anybody watched Jaws before? You know, when you were a kid, they got that dramatic music. Chur, 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 chur. And then you see the blood in the water and all that. But there's a purpose even for the whales. There's a purpose for the ants. We don't like them when they come up to your house, you know what I'm saying, climbing up the walls sometimes during the year. Hey Amen. If you ain't got your pest control, even if you do got pest control, tell them them ants still get in there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You be like, what in the world? Where's this thing? How did he get in here? Tell them when God has a purpose for the ant. Hey Amen. He has a purpose even for the birds. God does everything with purpose. And so God has a purpose. And because he has a purpose for each of us, Tell somebody, each of us, amen, don't compare your life to somebody else and allow that to distract the purpose that God has for you. And this is what the enemy likes to do, Brother Red, amen. He likes to come and cause people, amen, to get distracted from their purpose. Ooh, that's good right there. Amen. God has a purpose for you, but the enemy wants to distract you. Amen. Amen. He wants to discourage you and he wants to depress you. But tell someone, I will not be denied from my purpose. And so in my purpose, in my life, I'm going to have pain. Oh, can I tell someone, you're going to hurt, you're going to bleed, you're going to cry. Amen. But that will not stop your purpose. Amen. Because you are, amen, the workmanship of Christ. In other words, he created you with purpose in mind. And he knew that the enemy would come and he would huff and he would puff and he would try to destroy your house. Amen. But you had to tell someone not on today because I'm living on purpose. Amen. God has told me in scripture, amen, ah, that he was going to reveal his glory. Can I tell you, amen, that his glory and his purpose is attached to a process. Tell someone it's attached to a process. Ah, it's a process. This life that we live, it's a process that you have to go through. Amen. You've given birth to five children and you talk about that pregnancy process. Oh, it's a painful process. You got different uh, semesters, if you will. You know, if you go to college, trimesters. Thank you. You got different semesters in college, amen. And at the end of the semester, amen, the teacher gives you that essay, amen, that we were talking about. Oh, I need you to write 12 papers. Say what? You need me to write 12 papers? Oh, my Lord. Any crammers up in here? You had to write your papers. Wait till the last moment. I'm trying to get it done. You got to turn it in at midnight. There you are at 1158. Trying to upload it and send it. Let that Wi-Fi not right, act right. <laughs> Tell them when there's a purpose for that essay. Ah, but what we have to do, amen, we have to stay focused. Tell someone to stay focused on the purpose that God has for you. And I've come to tell you, no matter how young you are, no matter how old you are, amen, God has a purpose for your life. Even if you made mistakes, can I get a witness? Because I know I've made millions of mistakes, but I'm standing here because of his purpose. Oh, and I want to encourage us, amen, to find that purpose, amen. And I truly believe there's nothing wrong with worshiping God and praising God up in the temple. Tell someone there's nothing wrong with it. But I believe there's a purpose outside these walls. And I believe there's a son, amen, there's a daughter, there's a family, there's a man, there's a woman that God wants us to shine a light. 
so they can see Christ, amen, and glorify our Father, which is in heaven. Can you give God praise right there and say, I'm living on purpose? Ah, Romans said, amen, that, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Can we look at Romans 8? Uh, excuse me, Matthew 22 and 14, just real quick, and we're going to jump back to it. This is a good scripture I want to just jump to real quick. Matthew 22 and 14. Look what it says. Gospel of Matthew 22 and 14. And it says, for many are called, but few are chosen. Ah, that word called in the Greek means kletos, and it means invited. Uh, many are invited, amen, to join God's purpose. Uh, many are invited to the wedding, so to speak, but not everybody RSVPs. Not everybody shows up, amen. God has called many people, but because they couldn't handle their crisis, because they couldn't handle the struggle, because they couldn't handle the attack of the enemy, they have aborted their purpose. But I believe God's got some people in the house on today that says, Stephen, oh, I've been called, amen, but not only called, but I'm moving from called to chosen. Oh, I'm moving from being invited to being selected, amen, because I can handle my pain. Oh, because I can handle the persecution, because the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Oh, do you not understand, amen, that you are going to struggle in this cosmos? On this earth, you're going to bleed. On this earth, you're going to shed some tears. But God's word says that if he'll be for you, who can be against you? You got to give God praise. I'm living on purpose. And if I continue on the journey to my purpose, I am going to receive my promise. Why don't you give God praise right there and say, I'm on the verge of getting my promise. Ah, because the word told me that every promise in him is yea and amen. In other words, his promise is going to come to pass if I stay focused on this journey, amen, to his purpose. Oh, and that's why we're talking about purpose on today is not the purpose that we have for ourselves. Sometimes we have a purpose of who we thought we were going to be. Can I get a witness? When I was in high school, oh, I said, Lord, I want to be a basketball player. I never said, Lord, I want to be a preacher. Lord, I want to be a pastor. Oh, but God says, oh, I'm going to make you a pastor. Oh, you got some weaknesses, amen. You got some failures. You've made some mistakes. But that's not going to stop my purpose for your life. Because I need you to mentor some young men in this world. I need you to talk to some men who ain't got a daddy in their life. I need you to shine a light on that basketball court. I need you to be a light to let the world know, amen, that you ain't got to be a coach that curses. You don't got to be a coach that uh, treats the players wrong, but you can show them love and kindness. Because he said, with love and kindness have I drawn me. You got to tell someone I'm living on purpose on today, but it's not my purpose. Oh, Saul, amen, before he was converted, amen, uh, the Bible says he was persecuting people in the church, but one day he fell off that horse. Oh, and he saw a light, amen, and after he got up, amen, he was a changed person. Can I tell you, amen, that when you forsake your purpose and you say yes to the Lord and you say no to yourself, you say no to the flesh and you say nevertheless not my will but thy will be done is there anybody in the house on today that will say lord not my will lord not my way lord take me through the wilderness take me through the desert like moses take me through the pit like joseph but i've come to tell you amen that if you start in the pits, you're not going to end up in the pit. Can I tell you that Joseph went to the pit to the palace because God had a great purpose on his life. And we read in Romans 8, 28, and it says, And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to the call according to his purpose. Can I tell someone on today, sometimes that calling comes with a pit. Sometimes that calling comes going to Potiphar's house. 
And sometimes that calling comes with you having to serve time in the prison. But can I tell you, amen, that God has purpose in the pits. He has purpose in Potiphar's house. And he has purpose for your prison. It's because he's taking you to the palace. You got to go slap someone a high five and say, I'm living on a purpose. And then after I get through this process, I'm going to recognize my promise. After I get through this mess, I'm going to recognize my miracle. And you stand and say, Lord, I'm living on purpose. And I thank you for giving me purpose, amen. Purpose to wake up in the morning. Purpose to keep believing. Purpose to keep serving. Purpose to keep coaching. Purpose to keep overcoming. Purpose to keep running to see what the end will be. Can I tell you that your end's gonna end in victory? You ought to tell someone V-I-C-T-O-R-Y. Victory for my life. Victory for your son. Victory for this church. Victory for this family. Victory for our team. Victory for the coaches. Victory for our wives. And it's because of his purpose. And man, there was a purpose why Jesus died on the cross. And you say, what was his purpose for dying? He died for my sins. He died for my iniquities. He died for my transgressions. And by his stripes, I am healed. You ought to stand and say, by his stripes, I'm healed. By his word, I'm overcoming. By his promise, I can make it through the storm. You ought to say, I am a survivor. I am a winner. I am successful because God has a purpose for my life. And the enemy's trying to stop me from reaching my purpose. It's because he understands there's other people like the woman with the issue of blood going to the doctor at sea. Going to the doctor at Baylor Scott and Wright seeking a healing, but all you got to do is touch the hem of his garment and you shall be made whole. I dare someone on today to say, I'm stopped going to this person and I'm going to stop going to that person because they can't help me with my purpose. But I got to go see a man named Jesus that knows my purpose. He knows when I'm going to come out my storm. He knows when I'm coming out the pit. He knows when I'm coming out the struggle. And he knows when I come out, I'm going to be better. You got to slap someone and say, you're going to be better after you come out your storm. You're going to be stronger after you come out. Why don't you give them praise and say, I'm living on purpose, but I can't go to my seat yet, amen. Can I tell you that Romans 8 and 24, as I'm going to Romans 8 and 24, I want to encourage you on today to keep on living to see what your end's going to be. I've come to tell you that you're going to look much better in your future. You might have a famine right now, but can I tell you that God has purpose for your famine? You might be in the flood right now, but can I tell you there's purpose in the flood? Can I tell you there's purpose when people come up against you? Because Joseph said you meant it unto evil. But God said, I meant it for your good. Can I tell you that when people will put you down, there's purpose of people putting you down inside of the pit. Because God will send the Ishmaelites to bring you out. There's purpose when people lie on you. Thank you, Miss Potiphar. She lied on Joseph. And she, oh, she lied on Joseph. Even though she lied on him, Lady Warren. And he had to go to the dungeon to go to the prison. But then, amen, he was second in command in the land of Egypt. And that's because God had purpose for the lives. He had purpose for his family. Doing them wrong. God has purpose for your pain. He has purpose for your storm. He has purpose for your problems. You gotta tell someone I'm living on purpose. Amen. In Romans 8 and 24, it says, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doeth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that, we see not. 
then do we with patience wait for it? Can I tell you right here, that word hope meant to anticipate with pleasure. It meant expectation. It meant confidence. You ought to say blessed assurance. I got blessed assurance in God's purpose on my life. In other words, I got an expectation, Brother Curtis. Just like that lame man at the gate of Bethesda. All when Peter and John were at the gate. They said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I to thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And you got to understand that the lame man, Brother Red, the Bible recorded that he was expecting something of them. And I want to tell you on today to hold on to that vision. Hold on to that dream. Because when you expect something, tell someone you're going to get what you expect. So if you expect it to come to pass, I've come to tell you that he that shall come, he will come and he will not tarry. In other words, he's not going to delay. But he's going to come just like a biker says, at the appointed time. You ought to stand and say, God has an appointed time for my purpose to manifest. He has an appointed time, amen, to change my storm. He has an appointed time to bring me out my storm. And then he's going to take me to the other side of my storm. You got to tell us when I'm going from a storm to success. Amen. I'm going from a poverty condition, amen, to a prosperous condition. You got to stand and say, I'm living on purpose. Amen. But I want to encourage you right here, amen, not just, amen, to hope for your purpose. Amen. This is the part most of us fell at. Uh, most of us believe in the purpose of God. But the scripture said right here in Romans 8 and 25, amen, then do we with patience wait for it. Sometimes, amen, we get discouraged in the waiting process. Because sometimes, amen, our purpose, amen, takes a little bit longer. Sometimes our purpose might be delayed. Sometimes you get frustrated in your purpose. Sometimes you get discouraged in your purpose. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They're going to mount up with wings like eagles. They're going to run and not be weary. They're going to walk and not faint. Hold on, neighbor. Your purpose is getting ready to turn in your favor. Hold on, neighbor. You're getting ready to step into your purpose. Can I tell you, amen, in the Old Testament, there was a woman in the Old Testament, and it recorded, Brother Curtis, that they left handfuls of purpose for her. Who was that person in the Word? It said handfuls of purpose. I've come to say that God has planted seeds with your name on it, and he said, I got joy in the ground. I got victory in the ground. I got healing in the ground. I got a miracle in the ground. I got your purpose in the ground. I got your promise in the ground. But the question on today is, can you wait on God to turn it around? Can you wait on him to bring you out? Can you wait on him to call you to the party? Can you wait on him to take you to the top? I'm getting ready to close. But I dare someone to stand on today. Shake somebody's hand and say, I'm going to the top in 2020. I'm overcoming in 2020. I'll see my dream come to pass this year. You don't have to wait till the battle's over. You can shout now. You ought to give them praise. Give them glory. Give them honor and say, I'm living on purpose. Hallelujah. Because I've been selected. I've been anointed. I've been chosen for this generation. Chosen for this day. Chosen for the storm. Chosen for the struggle. And I've been chosen to have success. Because I am rising. Because Jesus died, but he also rise up. You will have a death. You will have a burial. But you will have a resurrection. He's going to resurrect that dream. Resurrect that promise. Resurrect that miracle. You understand that I'm living on purpose. I won't be denied. I won't be denied. Because he said it, and it is so. Can I tell you, amen? Romans 8, 28, it said, amen, that he foreknow us. In other words, he knew us before.
beforehand. He foreseen every problem we had. But it also says that he predestinated us, Brother Curtis, which means that he predetermined. Can I tell you, man, that when you get a, a letter in the mail and it says you've been pre-approved for 1,000, you've been pre-approved for 2,000, can I tell you that you've been pre-approved to be blessed? God has looked from heaven's high and looked down and said, I pre-approved you. I know you got some things going on in your life, but if you survive this process, I'm going to make that purpose come to pass. In the worst moment of your life, if you look in the word, everybody that got blessed, amen, they had to go through a storm. They had to go through a struggle. They had to get scarred. They had to have a crisis. They had to cry. But can I tell you, they also got a blessing. After their crying days were over, because David said that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. I've come to tell you, this is your morning to have joy. Your morning to have restoration. Your morning to have peace. Give them praise and say, I'm living on purpose. I'm living on purpose. Give God praise. Hebrews 10 and 36, and we're out of here. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. His will is his purpose. And check this out as we're going. His promise is his announcement. It is his pledge. You know, we, we make pledges. We say, oh, I pledge. Sometimes in giving, I pledge to give $1,000, right? You tell that when you go to the dealership. They got a new 2020 out there. I pledge to give you $1,000 now. You make an announcement to him. And what that does is it makes him say, okay, he pledged this. So now I'm going to have to do something. God said that he made an announcement that your promise is a yes. You got to give him praise for that. Because here in the Greek, this word promise, it is a, a divine assurance of good. And divine is dealing with the supernatural. It's dealing with the spiritual. And that's why, amen, we can survive our storm. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. But we're not just in the flesh. we got the Holy Ghost. you got to give God praise for that. You have his Holy Spirit. You have the comforter on the inside of you. And if you know anything about, what's the name of that movie where they have the vibranium? What's that called? When they had that, when, when they had the vibranium suit on, looking like Catwoman and Batman, no matter what hit them, it just bounced off. And that's what I'm telling you on today. He mentioned the scripture. I can't remember which one it was. It was something about being with Christ. But when you have Christ in your life, fear, worry, all that stuff has to bounce off you because you're walking in purpose. And when you're walking in purpose, you're covered. Yes, you're going to have some delays, but you won't be denied. You got to give God praise on today and say, I'm living on purpose because I have a divine assurance of good. And what that means is if God said it, oh, my Lord, that settles it. That means if he said that you're coming out, I don't know what you're dealing with right now. It could be sickness. Oh, Lord, he says you're coming out. He says you're coming out. Because I have a purpose for your pain. And how many know that the things that we struggle with, there's purpose in that? And sometimes we're ashamed of those struggles. We're ashamed of those pains. We're ashamed of those hurts. But God said on today, don't be ashamed. There's another scripture that said, I will make you forget the shame of thy youth. I think that was Isaiah. Amen. How many know sometimes we made some mistakes, we did some things we weren't so proud of? God says, you know what? I have purpose for that. Because I want you, I'm going to bring a man through your life. I'm going to bring a, a woman through your life, a son, a daughter, a person, a family. I'm going to allow you to use those struggles that you have to encourage somebody else. You know what I'm saying? And you got to give God praise because he allows us, amen, to have victory in the things that we're not proud of. He uses the brokenness, the hurt. He uses that so you can minister to someone else, someone else. And he says, I've given you unto the ministry of reconciliation. Give him praise one more time. We're finished on today. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap for that word. Amen. Living. Amen. On purpose. 
Amen. Hopefully, when you live on purpose, amen, you know that you can't have those same conversations you used to have. You can't hang out necessarily with those same crowd that you used to have hang out with. When you have purpose, then you understand that you're going somewhere, that you're just passing through, that your current situation, amen, is not your final destination. Amen. But you know that there is purpose, amen, and you're traveling down a path. Amen. That God has for you. Amen. And his promises are yea and amen. Amen. So as he said, you might be in the pit. Amen. You might be in the prison. Amen. But he has a palace waiting. Amen. Somewhere for each and every one of us. So don't be discouraged. Amen. When you're in your land of affliction. Amen. Because he said he will exalt you in due time. Victory for our team. Victory for the coaches. Victory for our wives. And it's because of his power. There was a purpose why Jesus died on the cross. And you say, what was his purpose for dying? He died for my sins. He died for my iniquities. He died for my transgressions. And by his stripes, I am healed. You understand and say, by his stripes, I'm healed. By his word, I'm overcoming. By his promise, can make it through the storm. You ought to say, I am a survivor. I am a winner. I am successful because God has a purpose for my life. And the enemy's trying to stop me from reaching my purpose. It's because he understands there's other people like the woman with the issue of blood going to the doctor at sea, going to the doctor at Baylor Scott and Wright, seeking a healing, but all you got to do is touch the hem of his garment and you shall be made whole. I dare someone on today to say, I'm stopped going to this person, and I'm gonna stop going to that person, because they can't help me with my purpose. But I gotta go see a man named Jesus that knows my purpose. He knows when I'm gonna come out my storm. He knows when I'm coming out the pit. He knows when I'm coming out the struggle. And he knows when I come out, I'm gonna be better. You gotta slap someone and say, you're gonna be better after you come out your storm. You're gonna be stronger after you come out. Why don't you give them praise and say, I'm living on purpose, but I can't go to my seat yet, amen. Can I tell you that Romans 8 and 24, as I'm going to Romans 8 and 24, I want to encourage you on today to keep on living to see what your end's gonna be. I've come to tell you that you're gonna look much better in your future. You might have a famine right now, but can I tell you that God has purpose for your famine? You might be in the flood right now, but can I tell you there's purpose in the flood? Can I tell you there's purpose when people come up against you? Because Joseph said you meant it unto evil, but God said I meant it for your good. Can I tell you that when people will put you down, there's purpose of people putting you down inside of the pit. Because God will send the Ishmaelites to bring you out. There's purpose when people lie on you. Thank you, Miss Potiphar. She lied on Joseph. And she, oh, she lied on Joseph. And even though she lied on him, Lady War. And he had to go to the dungeon. He had to go to the prison. And then, amen, he was second in command. In the land of Egypt. And that's because God had purpose for the lives. He had purpose for his family. Doing them wrong. God has purpose for your pain. He has purpose for your storm. He has purpose for your problems. You gotta tell someone I'm living on purpose. 